Hey everyone, it's Justin. Thank you for watching and welcome to my house. That's Justin's house. In this video, I'm going to show you one of the new ServiceNow applications that was dropped in the Q2 May 2023 store release from ServiceNow. I've got up my previous SSH episode, but real quickly here, we're going to search and find the one of the ones that I was able to get my hands on inside of my PDI, and that was Data Discovery. You can see here, Data Discovery. So Data Discovery, getting you the ability or giving you the ability to discover sensitive use data using out-of-the-box data patterns or by creating custom regex, pattern, regex patterns to act on. So let's take a look at the store. This is a little graphic for it. This is what it looks like. We're on version 1.0.0. came out again on May the 4th. And so I got this installed in my instance and what first threw me off when I searched for data discovery, which you can see there um, at the top, I don't know why that just went away. Let's try that again. There we go, my highlight tool. Data discovery was that this reference to classic, I was like, well, is this a new app or is this not a new app? So what I did is I went poking around in studio, pulled up the application and I was like, okay, the application menus on this actually say classic. So I'm in the right application. You can see it there. Um, data patterns, all data patterns, discovery, classic, and finding. So I know I'm in the right place. Now, what I didn't want to do was do this without you guys. Now, what I haven't done is actually practice this. I wanted to discover this with you. I'm trying to do that more. And so basically what I'm going to do, I took a look at the active data patterns. There weren't any. Then I took a look at all data patterns. We see we've got a credit card for Amex, Diners Club, Discovery, MasterCard, and Visa. And they're using some regex. So you can see right here, same for email and social security number and U.S. phone number. For those of you that are in the U.S., social security number is kind of our government issued ID number for taxes and for um, uh, retirement stuff. So social security number is something you want to make sure that's not somewhere unprotected in your instance. So I was like, okay, email is something that is relevant. So let's go and add an active data pattern for email. I was like, well, maybe I should set up a target table first because I don't know what I'm doing. And, oh, and by the way, <laughs> there is no documentation for this. So if you go over to um, the release notes, there's a release notes in the documentation site, but that's it. There is no um, actual information um, on how to use this or discover this. If you do find it, leave me a note in the comments below because I couldn't find it and I spend all day in the documentation site. But anyways, it looks like a pretty straightforward app. We'll find out here in a second. So new table, I'm going to add um, two tables. I'm going to add my store applications. So my store applications and the version history, they shouldn't have email addresses in them. So that should be a good test of whether this is actually finding stuff or not. So I'm just going to search for store app and I should be able to see my table that has store applications. So I hit submit. Okay, that's interesting. Um, it just puts it in a table. And then I'm gonna go grab it for my store applications. There's a version history table associated with each store application. Um, so I can keep track of the version history on that. So I'm gonna search for version history. Here we go, version history and make that one of the tables that it searches. Okay, so I've got two target tables. Now let's go set that active data pattern. Um, I'm gonna hit edit, I guess, and okay, cool. Edit, and I'm gonna choose email and save that. Um, let's actually go look at that data pattern so you can see the regex expression that I would not have been able to come with on my own for that. So that, thank goodness that that's an out of the box data pattern. Um, so that's it. And then I think next is to go run the job. So let's go to data discovery job. It, oh, well, this is interesting. Okay, like I said, I haven't practiced. We'll set up a new job since one doesn't seem to exist. Third time's the charm, hopefully. So let's go ahead and create another demo for YouTube. This is what happens if you don't practice. And we'll call this three. We won't leave that alone. And then we'll do 16, uh, not 16, Justin, come on. Three, 13, 35, because it's 16, 34 right now. And we'll give it till 1340. Um, and that's all on. Pacific time will open back up, schedule the job, and uh, and then I should be able to go while well, that's took about a minute here to kick off. But go to schedule jobs like I was trying to do before, and look at today's scheduled jobs, and we'll scroll down to 1335. Okay, there's 34. There it is. Data discovery. Okay, what's data discovery? Okay, so we got data discovery. It's run once. Record cannot be found. Well, that's interesting. Now it's gone. Did it just delete itself after it ran? Because this is 1335. Let's just check 1336. 
Yeah, it's not there. Okay, interesting. It just disappeared. You saw that. Recorded live. We'll go back to number three. Um, it did... It completed. And summary, total patterns used one, total column scan eight, total row scan 7306, two tables, zero matches found, and it ran in 661 milliseconds. Um, it's because zero records, that must be why I have no data discovery findings, which is cool. Um, that's good. I don't have email addresses, potentially, in either of those tables, uh, which is good. But what I do know is in those tables, and it's not out of the box, are ticket numbers. I've seen people, I've seen vendors put in um, stories and problems, uh, including ServiceNow, into their ticket numbers. So um, let's take a look at what I mean. Uh, if you look at the stories, we'll just search for stories here. Uh, Agile development stories. Um, they've got STRY and then seven different numbers after that. Uh, same for, uh, we'll just do incident real quick as an example. If I look at incident, um, we'll go to all. There's usually three three letters and then seven numbers. So one, two, three letters, one, two, one, two, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven numbers. Did I count that right? The zeros are throwing me off. So four zeros, five, six, seven. Yeah, seven numbers. And the other one I see often is problem. So let's search for a problem. Problem E. Problem all. And then I should see PRB and then seven numbers, right? So that's the pattern. Um, I actually don't know how to do regex, so we're going to cheat here. Uh, let me hide my bookmarks on that screen over there before I drag this over. And then now we'll pull this up. I'm on chat GPT and shout out to Michael Heron, who is a previous guest on my channel. Show me how to do this. Uh, give me the regex um, or regular expression, I guess I could say, for three letters followed by seven numbers. And hopefully ChatGPT gives me something I can work with. Yes, it does. Okay, look at that. I never would have come up with that on my own. Um, oh, look, and it's even teaching me. That little tilde is, or the caret asserts the cert, start of the search string. A to Z matches the three numbers. And then the D represents exactly seven numbers. Um, and asserts the end of the string. Well, that's a really helpful explanation. So I'm going to copy that code. Thank you, OpenAI and ChatGPT for that. And we're going to go to Data Discovery where we were before, I'm going to look at uh, data patterns. I'm going to create my own data pattern, and I'll just call this ticket number, and we'll put in the, and you know for the description, maybe I'll steal that from uh, ChatGPT, Chat uh, three, exactly three letters, um, upper or lower, followed by exactly seven numbers. That's the description, because that's what I want. We'll go ahead and submit that. Ooh, I see a test button. Okay, cool. So we'll save that. Ooh, this would be fun. Can I test this? I can test it. Um, okay, we'll put in a bunch of text. I'll just put in um, what ChatGPT gave me. So we'll put in that string here. And then in the middle of the string, I'll just put in um, a story number. S-T-R-Y. No, I think it's three. Oh, let's go, let's go PRB. PRB. And then one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. That's seven numbers. We'll test it. And it was not discovered. Ooh, so that's interesting. It didn't work. PRB, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven numbers. Hmm. So what is it? What does it want there? I thought it was regex. Well, that's interesting to know I can test when I'm doing this. And let's go back here and look at let's look at um, email. And we'll is there a test? There's no test. Item is read only based on its protection policy, probably because I'm in the right or wrong app. No, I'm in the data discovery application, so it's not that. So I can't test this one. Can I test a credit card? Nope. Read only. So the out of the box ones look like they're read only. My ticket number is not working. Um, let's get rid of the cap capitals and lower. I'm just going to do all caps and then followed by three numbers and hit update. And I'm just going to compare. Mine's formatted a little bit differently from this. Man, I wish I had some instructions on how I should be doing this. But let's see, they're looking for, on this one, credit card number starts with, let's see if we can learn from what they're doing um, by the description. Credit card number starts with 34 or 37. So slash B 47, zero through nine. And then it was 13 numbers long. 
slash B. So that's the pattern there, it seems to be the slash B. Okay, let's change mine up a bit. And let's do the carrot, we'll change that to slash B. And that's three characters. And we'll do the slash B. And then let's put that lowercase A through Z back in like it was there. And that kind of matches the pattern that they're doing there, if I'm figuring this out right. So let's go ahead and test it. We'll test it and we'll copy in that paste again. We'll copy and paste in that text again. And then let's put a problem number in the middle, PRB, uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Test it. It was discovered. All right, so Justin knows a little bit of regex, I guess. All right, so that's good. It was discovered. Uh, we'll cancel that. Now I've got a new pattern. Now let's make a, um, I've already set up the target tables, so that's good. I need to activate that data pattern. So let's do active data patterns. We'll edit that, we'll leave email in. Let's add the ticket number, hit save, and let's schedule a new job. So we've got a data discovery job. We'll do demo for YouTube four. It's gonna be a lot of editing on this one to make this not for long. All right, 1641, we'll do this at 1342. See if I can do it in time. 13, and we'll do 47 as a stop time. Oh, it's 42 again. So we'll change this to 43. Clock just flipped, you can't see it. It's in the upper right hand corner. And we'll do 48, just give it a five minute window to actually run, hit submit, open it back up, and hit schedule. And that should schedule that job to run here in about a minute. Okay guys, I just ran, it updated right in front of me. Uh, we got a state completed, and if you look there in the middle, um, it used two total patterns, scanned eight columns, uh, 7,306 rows, two tables, 18 matches found, took 730 milliseconds, so lightning fast there on the speed. Um, but the difference is I actually have some results, so let's refresh the list down here. And good, I've got release notes is where it found it. I was expecting that in the release notes table. It found the ticket number, 18, scanned 4,779 rows and got a percentage of matching rows at 0.38%. And uh, let's open up that entry. All right, so down below here, there's the record number. I mean, the dictionary entry, which I clicked on, the table, the data pattern. So let's use the little I button. I don't want to use this classify button yet until I know what I'm doing. So I'll open the record. Okay. There's the discovery job, total row scan card, data pattern, total row scan count, data pattern, percentage of matching rows, data pattern match count, and I guess I can say classified or ignored. Okay. Um, so let's go ahead and check the box and hit classify. What happens? The following tables columns will be associated with the selected data classes and as a result will be subject to all the rules and restrictions applicable to the corresponding data classes. And what can I put in here? There's nothing to select. I can select a data classification of confidential, internal, personal identifiable, public, or restricted. Let's call this public. Okay, it puts it in that box there. That's why I couldn't click anything. So now I can click on it, hit X. Okay, we'll put it back. So I'm classifying that table as public. Hit classify, and we'll go ahead and reload. Again, I'm learning this with you. I haven't done this before. And that's it. So that's done. And I guess I would run that as many times as I need to to find the different data in those different tables. But let's see, I haven't explored all of data discovery yet. Let's check out, did anything happen with my dashboard, which is the only thing, I guess I could go look at findings, which we know we got the one finding, but let's go take a look at the dashboard. The dashboard, when I first clicked on it, was empty. There was nothing on it. Hopefully now that I've done some stuff, yep, of course, it has some information. I've got my four different jobs that, as I was learning how to use this, but it didn't take me too long. Discover data patterns, ticket number, uh, data discovery findings by status, and uh, discovered tables, which is gonna be the total data pattern match count, and, and there's the table name, it's just long and you can't read it, and the legend there. And then it found in the column, as the release notes column for that table, um, and 0.38% of the rows, which 18 of them match that pattern. So that is the new data discovery app uh, by Justin. I learned it with you as I was going. I'll edit out all the long stuff, but I hope you found this video helpful. If you did, please like, please subscribe, or share it with somebody who you think might be interested in scanning their environment, looking for patterns of data um, to see if it needs to be classified and uh, managed, right? So now you know it's there, now you gotta do something and take action. That's it. Don't forget to always be learning.